So welcome to the final video in which I'd like to share how I see the month of Tishri, the seventh month, being a mirror opposite of the month of Nisan, the first month. In a mirror image of the seventh month, on Nisan 11, the fig tree was cursed by the Lord. That happened in the fifth year, confirming the five-year grace time frame we shared prior. On the same day, he cleansed the temple. One day, his triumphal entry in Jerusalem. That was on Nisan 10. The next day, Nisan 12, the Lord shared the parable of the wise and the foolish virgins and the servants, Matthew 24, 25. So we see Jesus entering Jerusalem triumphantly on the 10th, uh, and his onset of judgment, the pre-judgment, started on the, on the 11th. And he instructed his disciples, he visited with the disciples on the 12th, much like the Lord visited Abraham on the 12th, in this case, in the month of Tishri. In Joshua's days, we see a similar pattern of the crossing over at Bethabara, meaning the place of crossing. That was completed on Nisan 11, having started on Nisan 10, including the placement of the 12 stones. And he subsequently circumcised the men that day. So we see parallels with the narrative of Abraham again. Esther was notified of King Haman's plot, and she fasted for three days before touching the king's scepter on Nisan 15. We see that drawn out over here. So Nisan 10, 11, 12, 13. Note in the overview of celestial signs how we see Venus conjuncting with Regulus again, October 2-3, uh, 2020, or Tishri 15-16, confirming this picture of the Beloved going to the King, touching his scepter, and them coming together. So to me it is striking that we see that picture of originally on Nisan, Esther, fasting before going to the king and the two banquets, that happening on Nisan 16. And this year, Venus and Regulus conjuncting October 2 and 3, also pointing to Tishri 15, 16. So, a brief overview of the prophetic events of Nisan 10 to 22, based on uh, Wikipedia and Torah Tots, and that is a mirror of Tishri. And I believe it is a foreshadowing of our prophetic rapture timeline. So on the 10th of Nisan, we commemorate the death of Miriam, 39 years after the Exodus, plus the choosing of the Passover lamb. Honoring Miriam's death, the great Shabbat before Passover is commemorated. The tenth of Nisan was also the fast of Nadab and Abihu. They offered strange fire, and that cost them dearly. The tenth of Nisan, the Israelites cross over the Jordan into Canaan under Joshua at Bethabara. Eleventh of Nisan was the fast of Ezra, and the men under Joshua, having passed over the Jordan, were circumcised that day. The tribe of Levi had already been circumcised um, prior to the crossing, so they were set apart symbolic of having their hearts circumcised unto the Lord prior to the others. Abraham, uh, we shared that before, was visited by the Lord and two angels, where he received his name change, and he did the call of circumcision of, his, of, his, of himself and Ishmael. Plus, Sarah was notified of the prophesied birth of Isaac one year later. 12 Nisan is also the commemoration of the illness of Hezekiah, he was given 15 additional years by the Lord after prayer and repentance, and also to bring forth a son. 12 Nisan, Ezra departed from the Ahava River to Jerusalem. The 13th of Nisan, we see that pattern of this transition period being over, and by the time the 13th start, there is an execution of judgment. Sodom and Gomorrah were destroyed. 13 Nisan in 474 BC, Haman's decree to annihilate the Jews is passed. That also pertains to judgment. The 13th of Nisan is also the fast of the firstborn. On the 14th of Nisan, we commemorate the offering of the Passover lamb and, of course, our Lord Jesus being crucified. 
The 14th of Nisan is also the time by which Naomi and Ruth arrive in Bethlehem at the time of the start of the barley harvest, and that, of course, officially didn't start until after the offering of first fruits. 15th of Nisan, commemoration of the offerings of Cain and Abel, and where Cain offered his own works, Abel uh, offered his uh, lamb as a reflection of grace and the blood atonement foreshadowing Jesus. The 15th of Nisan, Sarah was kidnapped and brought to the house of Pharaoh. Jacob received Esau's blessing. He wrestles with the angel. Moses sees the burning bush. And we recommemorate the exodus from Egypt. The Assyrian army attacking Jerusalem was destroyed in 547 BC. And in 372, Daniel was thrown into the lion's den and remained unharmed. The 16th of Nisan, 474 BC, Esther, Queen Esther, appears before King Ahasuerus or Xerxes, unsummoned, and she and invites him and Haman to a feast, a banquet, to be held the same day. During the feast, she requests that the king and Haman attend a second feast the next day. The 16th of Nisan is also the commemoration that the children of Israel stop eating manna six days after entering the Holy Land under Joshua. The 17th of Nisan, around the 24th century BC, Noah's Ark came to rest on the, on the rest on the mountains of Ararat. And on the Nisan 17, we also commemorate the cleansing of the temple by Hezekiah. 17 Nisan was also the day of Esther's second uh, banquet, and then she exposes Haman regarding his plot to annihilate her people and to deceive the king. The king orders his servants to hang Haman swiftly. And of course, on the 17th of Nisan, Jesus appears to Mary Magdalene at the tomb before morning dawned. And afterwards, after the scene of the road of Emmaus, he ascended to the Father for the first time. Reappearing that night at the first upper room gathering in a transformed or glorified state, after which he breathed on those present, that was the first spirit infilling. Consider this connection. In Leviticus 23, God ordained the day after the weekly Sabbath during the Days of Unleavened Bread as the Feast of Firstfruits. The harvest could not start until the offering of the Feast of Firstfruits was performed and accepted by the Father. Jesus resurrected was that offering. In Joshua chapter 5, it appears that Israel kept the Passover, the text says, on the 14th day of Nisan. They ate the old grain left behind the next day, which would be the 15th of Nisan. As mentioned, the manna seized the next day, which was Nisan 16, and then on the 17th they ate of the new fruit of the land. Of course, it means that we're legally able to eat the first fruits of the land starting on the day of first fruits, which would have been starting on Nisan 17, the manna having stopped the day before. So as Jesus was a type of first fruits then, the bride may also be a type of a first fruits har uh, harvest pertaining to the rapture. And over here, there are more clues with regard to the month of Nisan and the parallels with the month of Tishri.